must you have a victim willing to press charges to arrest for disturbing the peace? My name is Anthony Bandiero, attorney and senior legal instructor for political law enforcement training, bringing another roadside chat. This question comes from an officer in California. Okay, a man is standing, I'm reading from my computer here, right? A man is standing on the sidewalk at midnight singing so loudly that the police are getting multiple calls and complaints, okay? Why, aren't, why are the California people so angry? Why can't you just be happy that you have this, this yodeler, okay, in your neighborhood, okay? You already have all this BS stuff going on in your state. Can't you just be happy you have this yodeler and why are you calling the, the police? All right, now you like the police, huh? Hey, get this yodeler out of here. Now you, like, now you wanna fund them. None of the callers, though, want to be identified and none are willing to press charges. The man has been warned multiple times by responding officers to quiet down, but he refuses. He loves his singing. He has something to share with the world. Can the officers make an arrest for disturbing the peace since the crime is happening in their presence? People are being disturbed as evidenced by multiple calls and the subject has been warned to stop. Or since there is no call around to press charges, is there a crime? Okay. Um, and then the officer also says, also what if this man is was doing this in front of the police station and refusing to stop. Could an officer be a victim if they're disturbed, they're disturbed by the noise? All right. He says, thanks for what you do. Thanks for what you do. Right? All right. So the answer is uh, on the first part, I think the answer is going to be yes. This is a citable offense. Let's, let's go through it. All right. Now, the first kind of concept is this idea that a cop's piece cannot be disturbed. Have you heard that before? Have you heard that you can't, you know, enforce something against somebody else because your peace can't be disturbed? Well, I got to tell you, when people say that, they're kind of referring not to like this type of situation, disturbing the peace. Um, what they're really doing, and they're talking about how fighting words and things about people challenging you um, are not really, uh, you're not going to really take enforcement action on that. That's, that to me is really what they're saying here. Not necessarily you can't take enforcement action on somebody committing a crime in your presence. Now, let's go to California Penal Code. And hey, guys, if you're not from California, maybe you have a similar law that's on the books. Now, I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm just telling you the way I read the law, okay? And reasonable minds can differ. If if reasonable minds never differed, we would not have a Supreme Court. Everybody would agree on the same thing, but you know that's not the case. Penal Code 415 says, um, you know, it should be punishment by X, 90 days in jail and $400 fine and so forth. If a person, any person who maliciously and willfully disturbs another person by loud and unreasonable noise, it's pretty much as simple as that. So let's think about what's going on here. Does it does it say anything in there that you have to have a victim willing to sign a complaint? Now, certainly you would need that if you had a misdemeanor not committed in your presence, right? So if we're getting the phone calls and we show up and this guy is not singing, um, we can't do, you know, and we don't have a, 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 a party, a victim willing to sign a citation or a complaint. Um, in most states, you're not going to be able to do anything about that, okay, because it was not committed in your presence. But if the person continues to sing and you are able to articulate that this person's loud singing is disturbing another person with unreasonable noise, right, um, it does also not say that you can't be the victim. But I would not personally go down that road. You know, I don't care about what I think, right? If I'm the police officer, it's not about me. It's about these taxpayers, right, that California needs so bad. What about them? They're making it very clear to you that their enjoyment, their, their uh, respite, their ability, their, their, their you know, the, the, the desire to actually have some sleep is being disturbed. So I say take enforcement action on that, right? Um, you're doing the right thing. What that guy, the way I look at these things is, is this guy being lawful, right? If you never have anybody willing to be a victim of a crime, is what, he do, is what he's doing now lawful? Is that lawful? Can he just yell the bullhorn at two o'clock in the morning in a neighborhood and it's completely lawful unless 
unless somebody steps up to the plate and says, yeah, I will be named in this, right? What if this guy is in the bullhorn saying, hey, whoever comes out against me, whoever signs a complaint against me, I will kill you and your entire family. What if, what if he says that? So is that is that lawful because nobody else wants to come and be that potential victim of this guy? You know, you, you see my, my point? It doesn't say you need a victim, a signed victim. It says this person is disturbing people's peace by unreasonable noise. You're watching it happen. You know it's happening because people are calling in, take enforcement action, okay? What he is doing is not lawful, in my opinion. Now, if the DA wants to drop charges because nobody else wants to come and go to court, fine, so be it. But you took care of, of a problem for the night, and it sounds like you had probable cause all day long. The last thing I want to share with you, my friends, is before you, um, when you engage these people, I want you to remember a mantra that I'm very, very big about. Always focus on people's conduct, not their content, not what they're saying. This is, there's always exceptions like fighting words and verbal threats, right? That type of thing. But generally speaking, um, this guy may come in and say, you violated my first amendment rights. I was singing about the Lord, right? I was singing about Gavin Newsom and how great he is for California. Now you might want to lock him up in a, in a mental institution, okay? So he may be making that claim that he has a first amendment right. But then when you watch the video, I'm going to see cops that went to my training say things like, sir, you can sing whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. This is America. You just can't do it loudly like you are because these people have a right as well to have peace and quiet at two o'clock in the morning. So if you lower your voice, you can continue. But if you want to sing this loud, you're going to have to take it somewhere else. The final question that I want to address is my officer asked, what about if he's doing it from the police station? Hey, look, I, I, I don't like, I, I don't want cops being the victim of these crimes necessarily, right? So if all you have is a commercial area and you, you have no belief that people are being disturbed by this besides you, why would you take enforcement action on it? Um, I wouldn't, but you do you. All right. All right. Hope it helps before you leave. Like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. Hope it helps. See you next time and uh, keep doing a great job out there.